Thanks for joining The Economy Magazine. I'm Benjamin Chong Alfares with the news from the global economy. On today's show, we debate the effect of the oil price drop on OPEC. Who will win in the oil industry tug of war? And we have a discussion ahead of the State of the Union speech. What lies ahead as President Barack Obama seizes the rise in populism to push his agenda? We start with the headlines. China's economy grew 7.4% in 2014, below Beijing's 7.5% target, and marking the weakest economic expansion in 24 years. Chinese shares rebounded on Tuesday, taking Asian shares in tow, following release of the slightly higher-than-expected GDP data. The Shanghai Composite Index gained 1.8%, Japan's benchmark Nikkei Index rose 2.1%, and Korea's KOSPI climbed 0.8%. Moderate support measures by Beijing in 2014 helped curb a more dramatic slowdown, but China's weak property market remains a key risk in 2015. We have revised our growth projection downward from 7.1% in October to 6.8%, in part because we see this um, healthy adjustment in the real estate sector um, uh, going forward. European Union foreign ministers said on Monday there were no grounds to lift economic sanctions against Russia. A recent EU memo had suggested implementation of the Minsk peace agreement could restart talks about global diplomacy and trade with Moscow. But attempts to get peace talks started were answered by an increase of rebel attacks in Ukraine over the past week. And while the crisis remains unresolved, a forecast by the European Bank for Reconstruction and Development shows Russia will shrink by a worse than expected 4.8 percent this year. There is no normalization. There is no back to business as usual in any way. There is a reflection uh, on how to use in the best possible way our tools, our role, in addition to the policies that we have been following in the past. Brazil's government will raise taxes on fuel, imports, credit and cosmetics as part of efforts to restore confidence in its fiscal discipline. Finance Minister Joaquin Levy said the tax hike will increase revenue by more than $7.5 billion. Levy aims to rebalance the economy, particularly from a fiscal perspective, to prevent Latin America's biggest market from losing its investment-grade status. But the higher cost of living has eroded the economy, and political unrest has returned to Brazil's streets. The IMF made the steepest cut to its global growth outlook in three years as lower oil prices failed to boost the global economy. The world economy will grow 3.5% in 2015, down from the 3.8% pace projected in October. Weak growth, along with prolonged below-target inflation, is challenging policymakers across Europe and Asia to come up with fresh ways to stimulate demand. And emerging markets face a risk of capital flight once the Federal Reserve starts raising interest rates. The euro area and Japan could remain stuck in a world that I would call low-low. Low growth, low inflation. And that would make it even harder for many euro area countries to reduce very high unemployment and excessive public and private debt. For the past 55 years, the OPEC cartel of oil-producing countries has controlled oil prices globally. But as the U.S. re-entered the oil market as a producer last year, the ensuing oil price drop may lead to a permanent change in the global oil industry. I-24 News reporter Dan Larat brings us the details. The Organization of Petroleum Exporting Countries, otherwise known as OPEC, has been all over the news these past few months. It is unclear how the recent decline in oil prices will impact OPEC. But it is clear that we are witnessing major changes. OPEC was founded in 1960 by five oil-rich countries, Iran, Iraq, Kuwait, Saudi Arabia, and Venezuela. Its objective is to act as an intergovernmental coordinator of oil policy among member countries. This has had the effect of giving OPEC a considerable amount of power over oil flow over the past 55 years. While some say the latest fluctuations in oil prices may be indicative of OPEC's decline, others suggest the opposite. With oil prices in sharp decline, 
dropping as much as 60% per barrel. The world's attention has been on OPEC leaders to cut output in order to drive prices back up. Indeed, as American fracking output has gained steam in recent years, despite risks to groundwater, the oil supply has outpaced demand. Instead of cutting oil, OPEC countries such as Saudi Arabia have been towing a stay-the-course party line, while falling prices have provided the equivalent of a billion-dollar-a-day tax cut to Americans, according to Forbes. It seems some OPEC countries are betting that they can sustain the lower prices, while others may not be able to. This notion is not without merit. Bloomberg reports that a record 209 American rigs have been taken out of the game over the past month and a half as oil has dropped below $50 per barrel. And we're joined now by i News reporters Ayman Sixak and Daniel Roth in Financial Bazaar to discuss how the oil-producing nations of the Middle East are affected by the oil price drop. Ayman. Thanks for joining us. Good to be here. Okay, so, I mean, why has OPEC allowed the price of oil to drop as much as well, it has? it's a complicated question. Right now, it's at a point where it's saying they're not allowing it to drop anymore. They're certainly not going to cut down on production, mm -hmm. despite long campaigns by both Iran and Venezuela. Uh, OPEC has done this in the past. It has cut production time and time again. Now they're saying another cut would be a sacrificial move. So they're saying there will be in line in two 2015 with producing 30 bi billion pa um, barrels per day mm -hmm. of uh, oil. And that's despite slashing uh, the projection for demand in the first half of 2015 to just 27 million barrels per day, uh, somewhat of a 15 percent um, decline of what they had originally estimated. So OPEC is in a very, very tough situation right now. Um, why has it allowed it? I mean, the extremely complicated relations between the members within uh, OPEC, right. and specifically discussing Saudi Arabia and Iran. There's a huge tug of war there. Yes. Uh, Saudi Arabia is trying to make Iran collapse, and we'll discuss that mm -hmm. in a minute, mm -hmm. um, and everybody's suffering. Okay. Well, let's see a comment by United Arab Emirates Energy Minister Suhail al -Mazroi. We are telling the market that uh, and the other producers, that they need to be rational. They need to be like OPEC. They need to look at the growth in the international uh, market. Any, if you ask any uh, economist, anyone who is uh, sensible, he'll tell you that the decision is strategic and it's rational for OPEC. Now, clearly, I mean, one of the main issues in OPEC currently is, you know, the, the divide, so to speak, um, between those countries that are okay financially and those countries that are really hurting right now because of the oil price drop. What is the situation in Libya? How is Libya affected by this? Well, Libya is a very, very uh, strange and precarious situation on its own. I mean, with the fighting still ongoing in Libya and political instability just increasing, the OPEC representative in Libya has disappeared. Mm -hmm. That's the best way to describe it because no one knows where his whereabouts are. And Libya, the situation is extremely complicated because militias have taken over some parts of oil production sites, not others, and it remains still unclear. It's sort of split, right? As much as the, as the country is split, also the oil industry is split. Exactly, and it's even split within the split because not, it's not exactly clear wow. which parts yeah. they do control and which they do not, but it is clear that his disappearance has to do with this. It's another way to try to pressure OPEC into um, implementing changes right. it's not interested in. Let's go to another country which obviously is very central, which we we mentioned before Iran. Now, I mean, much as we look at Russia as being at the center of a lot of controversy and, 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 and political uh, you know, intrigue, I mean, Iran uh, has its fair share as well. How is Iran, which is a huge oil producing country, affected by this? Well, an unlikely statement from Iran this week. They said, despite long campaigns to try to get OPEC to cut production in 2015, they said after OPEC's decision, decision well, you know what? Um, we don't need you to. We can survive on $25 a barrel. Are they bluffing? I mean, they're really hurting right now, aren't they? They are hurting very much. I guess they can survive for a very, very short while. This is a short-term solution. Mm -hmm. But Iran is basically saying, we'll deal with this on our own. I mean, Iran is also trying to fight sanctions from all over the place. So obviously, the pressure is on. Right. Now, the current arm wrestling match between the, the different oil uh, producers, is this something that's unique to the oil industry, would you say, or is this just another price of war? 
I don't think it's unique to the oil industry, but I think it is more extreme in uh, in the oil industry specifically. This is a lot of money we're talking about and a lot of power and a lot of control. Saudi Arabia is trying to pressure Iran into uh, halting its, it's, uh, its nuclear program. It's not average price for obviously, yeah. Exactly. And there's so many political considerations. Um, a lot of uh, powers within OPEC are trying to stop Iran from advancing with their nuclear developments and um, um, their nuclear goals and aims. And this is also partly why they're uh, trying to pressure Iran into collapse. But on a very basic level, I mean, we've seen this happen in the coal industry as well in terms of a price war. I mean, you know, they're basically trying to price out those that they presume will not be able to, um, to hold up. Is that true? Well, it's interesting that you say that because Bloomberg actually uh, reported this week that those who are suffering from uh, the falling oil prices, which is basically everybody, should look to coal and mm -hmm. mining and mm -hmm. thermal energy and uh, basically uh, solar energy and any kind of alternative energy for uh, rebo rebooting their um, uh, income. So it could be that oil is no longer, it will no longer be the main uh, producer of money right. in the coming well, future. I'm in six. Like, thanks for those comments. We're going to switch topics now to take a look at U.S. President Barack Obama's sixth State of the Union address. Daniel Roth. You're going to take us there. Essentially, we've seen the U.S. perform really well according to what we saw also in the news flash, the IMF's forecast for 2015, 2016. I mean, everybody was cut back. The U.S. actually was the one country, the one main country that was not cut back, actually doing much better than before. I would think, you know, it looks like Obama is doing pretty well for himself. Would you say? It seems on the surface that way, and it's true to a large, large extent. Uh, there's some factors to take into account. Number one is, as we just discussed uh, regarding OPEC, re regarding oil, regarding sanctions, uh, uh, outside of the U.S., the world seems kind of hurtling towards some kind of uh, uh, conflict. You know, just today... Two countries that are major oil producers and have major sanctions on them by the U.S., uh, Russia and Iran, signed a military pact. Uh, so you see the kind of closeness that economics and politics and conflicts can have. Uh, the other side of it is that the Republicans who control Congress will try their best not to give President Obama a single win. So when he says that jobs have been gained, uh, you know, as we'll see in a, in a moment, right. the question is what kinds of jobs have been right. gained. Uh, it's these kinds of questions that are at the core, even though there's a lot to celebrate. What would you say are the, are the key issues this year? What are the main things that are going to pop up in this uh, address? Well, everyone's expecting the number one issue this year, uh, particularly on economic mm -hmm. lines, to be inequality. Of course, uh, you know, uh, for days people have been talking about the, the leaked uh, plan to, to put a $3 billion new tax plan to work to redistribute uh, from, uh, you know, the, the 1% to the 99%. percent if I'm not mistaken. Those right, who yeah. earn over $2 million. The top right? of the top. And, of course, right. you know, as, as we've reported here, that'll have to jump a lot of hurdles in Congress in yeah. order to get passed. But that's going to be the talk of the town tonight, uh, particularly and certainly on economic uh, on the economic uh, mm -hmm. front. Mm -hmm. uh, it's interesting to note the Atlantic uh, has this, uh, this uh, interactive graph that kind of tells you what have been the major subjects in different eras. And Before you go there, hold on. Let's just, let's just see what President Barack Obama had to say in his last State of the Union speech. Our deficits cut by more than half. And for the first time, for the first time in over a decade, Business leaders around the world have declared that China is no longer the world's number one place to invest. America is. Okay, so going on those key issues you mentioned. Yeah, so the, uh, the Atlantic has this, this interesting inter interactive graph uh, explaining what have been the major themes in different eras. So, you know, if you look, uh, employment, which is this uh, mm -hmm. major theme in recent years, in, uh, sorry, in, in the last century, uh, it's not so much talked about. It wasn't talked about in the first hundred or so years of the right. U.S., right. but it became a major issue around the Great Depression, bumped up a little bit in the 70s and 80s. Uh, but even in the Great Recession, didn't regain its notoriety in terms of presidential speak. These graphs are showing how many times this word has been used per million words. Right, um, right. You know, if you look at labor, it follows essentially the same layout. Mm -hmm, uh, right. It's, it's, you know, 
showing that employment and labor, these are major issues that, that hit the U.S. at the same time. Uh, and, of course, they're related. And so, you know, the only outlier is Abraham Lincoln, right. who, of course, uh, had a lot of interest in these kinds of subjects. But he's a major outlier if you look at the eras that they in the, hit. In the final comment, Daniel, what would you say, how is Obama doing, according to the Wall Street Journal? Uh, according to the Wall Street Journal, he's doing well. Uh, there's a little bit of a manufacturing renaissance. There's a little bit of job gains. But they're not as good as, of course, they're presented. Okay. Well, Daniel Roth and Iman Siksak, thanks for joining us, giving us more information both on oil in the Middle East and, of course, the State of the Union address. Thank you very much for watching The Economy Magazine, your daily source for economic and financial reports at i 24 News. Thanks for watching. Join us again tomorrow and visit our page, of course, i24news.tv.